scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want you to please pay attention because tonight's teaching is an epochal teaching. It will open you up to a very deep spiritual understanding and crown your year and the years ahead with victory. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. Second Kings chapter 6. Let's begin our reading from verse 24. Lots of scripture tonight, so make sure you are ready to write. The Bible says, And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and beside Samaria. 25. And there was a great famine as a result in Samaria. And behold, until you know the donkey's head could not be sold and all of that let's go to 26 26 now it says and as the king of israel was passing upon the wall there cried a woman unto him saying help my lord o king 27 and he said if the lord do not help thee when shall i help when shall i help thee out of the barn flour or out of the wine press and the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, Listen to this. This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. 29. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. Verse 30. On hearing this, the king heard the words of the woman and he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth within him upon his flesh. 31, we're reading to 33. And he said, God do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. You can imagine that the king is dealing with an economic problem here and he does not go to his advisors. He blames it immediately on the prophetic that there, I know that I may not know what the problem is, but there is a relationship between Elisha and this pain and whatever it is, he's going to pay for it. Let's finish up. But Elisha sat in his house and the elder sat with him and the king sent a man from before him but ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elder, See how this son of a murderer had sent to take my head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is it not the sound of the master's feet behind him? What an amazing prophet. I mean, this guy was not praying, no. He just sat down discussing and said, Look at what these people are discussing about me. And while he yet talked with them behold the messenger came down unto him and he said behold this evil is of the lord what should i wait for the lord any longer let's finish up 34 or now 7 verse 1 give us 7 verse 1 and elisha said hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flying, fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Let's stop there. Father, grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
it is very clear from scripture that the manifestation of the believer's victory depends on two things number one understanding and number two engaging the systems of advantage that god has made available to the believer let me take it again that while it is true that our victory in christ is a fact but that the manifestation of the believer's victory depends on two factors number one understanding and then number two engaging the systems of advantage that god has made available in hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 9 to 11 hebrews 4 9 to 11 the bible says this is paul the one who spearheaded the Pauline revelation, letting us know of the realities of redemption. The same Paul is teaching here and he says, There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10, it says, For he that entered into his rest have also ceased from his own works as God did from his. And then he charges us, verse 11, he says, Let us labor let us labor therefore to enter that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief so the bible is very clear that potentially speaking the victory of the believer if using any parameter and, and, and in any dimension at all is a fact as far as the finished work of christ is concerned but stepping into the experience of it and manifesting it depends on number one the level and the extent of your spiritual understanding number two your ability to engage to engage the systems of advantage that have been made available to the believer are we together and i have taught you in this house and if you have been a believer for some time under any kind of of methodical mentorship you should have learned that there are systems of advantage it is my description you can call them forces of victory you can call them anything at all we are talking about the keys of the kingdom these are the mysteries that the believer engages in order to establish the reality of dominion here and now there are many of them Jesus said I will give you the keys of the kingdom so it's not a key Believing that there is only one key of the kingdom is wrong. There is one key to the kingdom. That key is not a metal. That key is a person. Jesus is the key to the kingdom. But now when you are in the kingdom, there are many keys of the kingdom. Are we together? Yeah. The same way there is one master key that opens up. Every house has a door that we call the main door. No matter what other keys you have, if you cannot access that main door, those other keys are useless. But now that you are in the house, you will need the key to the living room, the key to the toilet, the bathrooms. You can be in the house and yet just hang around the corridors of the house because you do not have the keys of the house. The key to the house opens up the house for you. The keys of the house opens up the rooms for you. Are we together now? So the Bible lets us know that we have been given access to the keys of the kingdom. There are many keys that we engage in our faith work. Please listen. These are the forces that make us mature. These are the forces that empower us to command dominion. You don't wish dominion. You don't hope for dominion. You engage and manifest dominion through light. Are we together? Let me list a few of them. Number one is the ministry of prayer this is one of the systems of advantage that have been made available to the believer in christ that men and women can engage in the ministry of prayer and with it command strides and victories in the spirit he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray first thessalonians 5 17 he says to pray without ceasing are we together mark chapter 11 and verse 24 it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have it james 5 13 it says is any man afflicted he said let him 
pray. So the Bible, the Bible clearly lets us know that prayer is a system of advantage that has been provided for. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, he says, strengthen your brethren. We see that prayer is one of the foundational systems of advantage. I will repeat every time I have the opportunity to, that prayer is not the only key. Prayer is a foundational key, but not the only key. Number two, we have the gift of men as a system of advantage. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God reaches men through men. In Exodus chapter 3, when he had an encounter with Moses, he said, I have heard the affliction of my people by reason of their taskmasters, and I am come down. God comes down to men through men. He was sending Moses to represent him. Are we together now? Very, very important. The gift of men is one of the dominion mysteries in this kingdom. That all blessings come from men, but through men to men. So when blessings leave heaven and there are no human vessels to midwife that blessing until it gets to you, you can have a prophetic word that says you are blessed and never walk in the experience of it. The gift of men. We have the force of favor as one of the systems of advantage. Favor. Favor as one of the dominion mysteries that is responsible for the fearful rising and the exaltation of the saints. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part. And Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that saw her. Esther 2.15. Esther 2.15. The B part. And Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that looked upon her verse 17 of the same Esther chapter 2 it says that she found favor in the sight of the king more than all the virgins Psalm 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst a favor towards them So favor is one of the dominion systems of advantage that a believer's life, even though in Christ, if it is bankrupt of the manifestation of favor, then there are many things that will not go well in your life. And I have taught you here that there are three biblical indices that prove favor. Number one, unusual access. Number two, unusual um, um, kindness. And then number three, unusual, what's the third one now? Acceptance, thank you. Unusual acceptance, unusual access, and unusual kindness. These are the tripartite indices that spell favor in the life of any believer. Is someone learning tonight? Another system of advantage that the Bible has made av available, or God has made available to the saints is speed dominion over time speed is a system of advantage and the hand of the lord came upon elijah the bible says and he ran on barefoot and he overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel god is able to give men speed god is able to give men speed when when the wife of isaac jacob was going to bless his sons esau I mean, Isaac was going to bless his sons, Esau and Jacob. And he says, go and make me venison, such as my soul delighted, so that I will bless you. And on hearing that, Rebekah called Jacob and said, listen, dress like Isaac and take the meal. When he took the meal, Jacob said, Isaac said, how come you have come so early? He said, because the Lord has given him paraphrasing. God gave me speed. That's why I came early. So God can give men speed. Is someone learning now? It says, by you I will run through a troop, and by my God I will leap over a wall. 
I'm speaking to someone here who has not experienced speed yet in your life. In the name of Jesus, the remaining days that ends this year, may they be days of speed in your life. Please sit down. We're doing a refresher before I deal with what we're discussing tonight. I'm showing you the systems of advantage that when you say you are walking in dominion, we have a right to probe you until you defend your knowledge with these forces. If you tell me I am walking in dominion, I will say prove it. Defend what you are saying. It is by engaging these forces that we walk in dominion. Another is restoration. Restoration is a biblical system of advantage that helps men to recover lost time, helps men to recover things. Restoration is a possibility in the kingdom and I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, God restores. The Bible says, and God restored the years of Job. In Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says that God restored Job when he prayed for his friends. Job 42 and verse 10. God himself restored, he turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. So God is a restorer. Another system of advantage, skill and diligence. Skill and diligence according to scripture is a system of advantage. The Bible says, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he leaves him with an assurance that he will stand before kings and he will not stand before mean men. Is that true? So you can be, you can be skilled or you can be born again but if you do not take the time to build capacity to become skillful in daniel chapter one when you read daniel chapter one in babylon the king was given the requirements to gather certain boys certain of the hebrew boys that will be trained out of the slaves the people that came where daniel was part of you read there and you see strict requirements the king did not just say bring anybody after all they are a covenant people no there were strict intellectual requirements there are many believers who do not place value on skill they say things like there is favor even the favor you talk about i have taught you here that favor is not unmerited favor is merited proverbs 13 15 the bible says good understanding procured favor it says but the way of the transgressor is hard give us daniel chapter one four and five maybe and then we'll We'll just get there is someone learning already it says bring children in whom there is no blemish but well favored the king did not want nonsense in his palace he knows that if you carry jonah in your boat your boat will sink the king was honest to appreciate that these guys are slave but discern look at them make sure they are skillful in all wisdom cunning in knowledge understanding science such as have the ability to stand in the king's palace so that we can teach them the tongues of the chaldeans among them verse 5 the bible says that the king appointed a daily provision and then among those boys daniel was there and all his friends and then the story continues god is not an author of being dull if you are dull is an attack backed up by laziness you must you must not excuse being dull with spirituality there is an intellectual component to dominion nobody will follow a leader whose mind is not at work are we together your mind must be active even the gift of the spirit will be buried in the mind of someone that is not developed say amen So these are some of the forces of advantage, the systems of advantage available to the believer. Listen, you are only matured. You are only walking in the experience of dominion to the degree to which you have laid hold of these forces. When you come to a door that is locked with precision and exactitude, you know what key to engage. You don't stand and weary yourself through blindness as it were in the days of Lot. 
That's what happened when the angel struck the people with blindness. He said they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were in front of the door, but the know-how to be able to engage. There are many people claiming maturity. There are many people claim, I am matured. Why? I've been in church for 10 years. No. You defend your spiritual maturity using the indices of character and conformity to the image of Christ, using the indices of your spiritual understanding, using the indices of the outworkings of the power of God in your life, and finally using the highest that the Bible gives, love. So when a believer tells you he's matured, you don't need to argue. Check against these four indices. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. Number two, the level of illumination and spiritual understanding that you have. Number three, the degree of the outworking of the power and the grace of God in your life because grace is multiplied through knowledge. If your knowledge is growing and the outworking of that grace is not working, then something is wrong. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection, and great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. So, one of the systems of advantage available for the excelling of the believer to help you maximize destiny, reveal Jesus, and live a meaningful life is the prophetic. Please write it down. I begin my discussion now. The prophetic. Tonight we are discussing the prophetic. I have taught extensively from teaching after teaching through these various systems of advantage aforementioned and many more will come but tonight we are discussing the prophetic we want to see and know and understand the role that the prophetic has to play in destiny actualization many people have erroneously and ignorantly thrown away the prophetic and the vast value that it brings to the believer and they have done so to their detriment. I'm praying that as you listen tonight, God will give you heightened understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, please let me your attention now. The prophetic is founded upon certain foundations. There are certain foundational thoughts you must have about the prophetic. I want to give them to you very quickly. Let's look at four scriptures that help us to understand the foundation. What is the basis for the prophetic? Number one, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's walk together, media. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. The Bible says, through faith we understand. Are we following now? that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. So the Bible tells us that the technology of manifestation is that the earth only manifests realities that are already there in the spirit. Hence the need for the prophetic. The prophetic is predicated upon this foundation are we together? That it only happens in the physical realm as it is in the realm of the spirit. Number two, James chapter two, please, and verse 26. James 2, 26. Paul was speaking about faith and works. And here's what he had to say. For the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works. For as the body without the spirit is dead. That means there will always be a spirit component to every material thing for it to be alive. A body there does not just mean a human body. Any physical expression is a body. There must be a spirit component that backs it for it to be alive. Your business is a body. If there is no spirit backing it, it is dead. Number three. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Amos 3 and verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal it his secrets to his servants, the prophets. That means that it is, even though God is shrouded in mystery, every time God is going to do something on earth, it is not without a prophetic voice knowing and walking in partnership. I've taught you this in the series let them have dominion is that true 
we don't give God permission it's a wrong use of the word we don't give God permission man does not have the power to give God permission rather what we do is partnership not permission but that God has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel he said the heaven even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord he says but the earth hath he given to the sons of men so anytime activities are supposed to happen on earth God will always make sure that there is an ear and there is an eye that has access to it. When he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he had to come down to talk with Abraham. He said, shall I hide this from my friend Abraham, seeing that he was going to be a great nation? And Abraham negotiated the release of Lot. And all of them would have been released but for Lot's wife. And the Bible uses her life as a lesson to teach us not to draw back. It says to remember Lot's wife. It says, and if any man draws back, my soul will find no pleasure in such a one. Are we learning tonight? So God does not do anything except he reveals to the prophets. Now let's look at Hosea chapter 12. We'll read verse 10, then we'll jump to verse 13. Hosea 12, 10. I have spoken by the prophets. So God speaks by the prophet and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes even by the ministry of the prophets now are you seeing this now God speaks through the prophets but he also speaks through the ministry of the prophet I will tell you the difference let's go to verse 13 it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved so the prophetic is founded upon the fact that man even though he lives in the earth by our construct we operate across two realms one the realm of the spirit and the other a physical realm the presence of that duality of realms necessitates the ministry of the prophetic hallelujah now write this please for your information everyone please write there is i wrote here there is the prophetic as an office please write it down there is the prophetic as an office but there is the prophetic as an operation there is the prophetic as an office but there is the prophetic as an operation so there is the prophetic office called by God to occupy one of the fivefold offices of the prophet but there is the operation of the prophetic and you do not have to be a prophet to operate the prophetic you do not have to be a prophet to operate the prophetic this is very important for us to learn I said that there is the prophetic as an office and there is the prophetic as an operation and that you do not have to be a prophet to operate in the prophetic hallelujah are we following so far now write this down why is the prophetic so powerful i want to teach you now why is the prophetic so powerful what is it about the prophetic that makes it uniquely powerful are you ready I'll give you two scriptural reasons and please pay attention don't assume you know what I'm saying listen open up your heart right as you learn number one why is the prophetic so powerful number one because the prophetic I wrote here I'll slow down to let you write and then I'll explain because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time this is the first reason why the prophetic is so powerful because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time what does that mean that means the prophetic gives you the liberty to access information from all the three dimensions of time yesterday today and tomorrow this is one of the reasons why the prophetic is powerful. I hope you know that time is tripartite. There is the past called yesterday. 
There is a present called today and there is a future called tomorrow. Tomorrow is not the day after today. Tomorrow is any day after today. Are we together now? Any day that is beyond today is called tomorrow. You can call next week tomorrow. You can call 10 years tomorrow. Any day that is beyond today is called tomorrow. And any day that is behind today is called yesterday. So the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time. That means you can access through the prophetic information from the three dimensions of time. The prophetic can enable an individual to reach into yesterday. Can you imagine? Yesterday is gone. There is no ordinary way of going back into the yesterday. But the prophetic is given the liberty to be able to reach into yesterday. And let me tell you, the prophetic sometimes can go far into yesterday. And bring relevant information. The prophetic can function in today. And from today, the prophetic can enter tomorrow. Powerful. Do you know what that means? That means if you understand this teaching tonight through the instrumentality of the prophetic among other systems of advantage fear will die permanently. If I can draw forth something from my yesterday and use it to make decisions today and if I can have the opportunity to access a tomorrow that have not entered physically then why fear? The boldness of kings in ancient times was not just because they were warriors. It was not just because they had weapons of war or a large army. In addition to all those provisions, the kings in ancient times were very bold because they had a group of people who could have access to the realm of the spirit, either by necromancy and divination, are we together, or through the agency of the Holy Spirit for godly kings. And after they prepared their army, they would consult with these men. What have you seen? It is still a practice in many religious settings in Africa. And in fact, there are settings within Africa that the kings do nothing except and unless they consult with mediums and the people who interface with the realm of the spirit. When the kings make decisions, they make it from a standpoint of confidence. Most of us have taken too many risks in our lives because we are not interested in taking advantage of the provisions that the prophetic brings. God is helping someone tonight. In the name of Jesus. So why is the prophetic so powerful? Because it can grant you access to exact dominion over time. It sustains a unique ability to empower the believer to reach into the three dimensions of time. The prophetic can help you to get into yesterday and then it can, it can help to um, give you perspective still on point one. If you are able to reach into the happenings of yesterday prophetically, it is able to give you perspective, if it, it is able to give you comfort and then also to give you direction. If I can reach into yesterday, probably something happened yesterday that from a logical sense, it does not make sense to me. But the prophetic has the unique ability to reach into yesterday and interpret those events from the, the view, a scriptural standpoint. The book of Job was written prophetically. That's why we could understand it. If we read the book of Job just historically, it will leave us in confusion. Are we together now? Yes. The book of Job gives us an advantage of what was happening in the realm of the spirit versus its manifestation physically. That's why we are able to have perspective. The prophetic is powerful. You can reach into yesterday, today, and even tomorrow. It can give us perspective to interpret things correctly. It can give us comfort and it can give us direction. The second reason why the prophetic is so powerful is that the prophetic can create supernatural possibilities. The prophetic can create supernatural possibilities. This is the second reason why the prophetic is so powerful. It can create supernatural possibilities, comma, and schedule them in your present and your future. 
the creative dimension of the prophetic cannot do anything about the past but it can do something with the two dimensions of time remaining the present and the future so i said that the prophetic second reason can create supernatural possibilities and schedule them in your present and in your future hallelujah this is powerful the prophetic can literally create supernatural possibilities and then give them timing in your present and in your future by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow that is the creative dimension of the prophetic he would have said by this time and stop there but the prophetic does not only create it schedules their manifestation by this time tomorrow hallelujah what does it mean to create i need to put perspective on that is someone learning tonight what does it mean to create write this down please to create means to make manifest in the world of men i like to give simplified definitions so that we take away unnecessary complications to create means to make manifest in the world of men most people have their idea of creation as making something from nothing i used to believe that a long time ago but i found out that is not a very intelligent definition no just because a substance is spiritual does not mean it is nothing are we together now we know that in fact the weightiness of a substance is how spiritual it is so you cannot call spiritual substance nothing the average believer says to create means to make something from nothing well i don't think so i don't agree creativity has to do with making manifest in the world of men the system that transports spiritual realities and makes it manifest in the world of men is called creation that means to give spiritual realities material expression is what we call creation is someone learning already because the prophetic then has an assignment to take realities that are already there in the spirit but in need of manifestation in your life for instance your victory is already in the realm of the spirit but you don't need it in the realm of the spirit there you need it here and now so the prophetic is able to bring it and make it happen by this time tomorrow the victory that came upon Samaria was already there in the spirit. But the prophet scheduled a season. The prophetic does not happen within time. It is above time, but it manifests through time. According to the time of life. Hallelujah. So the second reason why the prophetic is so powerful, it is because... It can create supernatural possibilities. Please look at me. Do you know what that means? You are sitting here tonight in Koinonia and when you look left and right, every physical thing you see in your life may not be what you want. I have good news for you. What you are looking for already exists. Otherwise, you would not even desire it. The fact that your heart desires it is a sign that it already exists. But it's in a dimension that does not profit you yet. The assignment of the prophetic is to pull it down and to make it manifest. Let me speak to someone, even while you are seated here in church, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the prophetic, we schedule realities to be made manifest in your life hallelujah in the ministry of Jesus when the centurion came to him to challenge him and to talk with him the centurion said Jesus said I'm coming to your house and he said no speak the word only for i am a man under authority and while that discussion was happening he did not know that the power that came from his faith had gotten to the house already and was already correcting things as soon as he was done his aides came and said listen i don't know what happened but while you were speaking that means while this is happening right now you are in koinonia sitting some of you are thinking i told you tomorrow is any time beyond now beyond today there are things God is already arranging. 
compelling your destiny helper since he has refused to bless you god will use the disguise of christmas and say what have you done for this family and the lord remembered sarah and the lord remembered hannah to remember does not mean he forgot that means you have used scripture to call his attention to the need for manifesting a thing Please be sensitive. There's something God is doing. I'm saying it again as you are seated here in church. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy to you. You are here in the house of God. You will only return to shed the tears of joy. Please sit down. For someone while you are here, at this point, even though it's Sunday, someone is discussing your job. At this point, someone is discussing how to help you. Listen, if you don't believe this, then it's because you don't know what the prophetic can do. I told you that the prophetic number one, let's recap. Don't be tired. This is a school. We're learning tonight. That number one, the prophetic is able to exert dominion over time. So don't allow the devil use yesterday to frustrate you and say, listen, yesterday, you already rubbish yesterday. Thank God you have the gift of today and tomorrow. It is always said, the only person who does not have the gift of tomorrow is Satan. His tomorrow is already doomed. You see, every other person can use the past. Someone said, if Satan reminds you of yesterday, remind him of tomorrow. At least my grandfather was an idol worshiper. But you right now, you are doomed. No possibility for repentance. Are we together? And then the prophetic is able to create possibilities and to schedule them in your life. Let's look at a few examples very quickly. Is God helping someone? I may not read through the scriptures I will just list them so you just write a few an example of this dimension of the prophetic is seen in the creation of man Genesis 1 26 to 28 most people do not know that the creation of man itself is a manifestation of prophecy God said let us make man while he was speaking there was nothing like that on the earth but from himself he brought out that spirit called Adam male and female together and then he not only did that, when you get to Genesis 2, he separated them. The man, the male, came out and from his ribs he made woman. And from those two, the whole earth now, eight billion and counting. Another example is 2 Second, Second Kings chapter 5. The full text is from verse 1 to 14. But let's look at verse 1, verse 10 and verse 14. The healing of Naaman. Is an example the healing of Naaman the Bible says now Naaman the captain of the host of Syria was a great man with his master he was honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria the Bible says he was a mighty man of valor but he was a leper go to verse 10 Elisha sent a messenger unto him the leper now go and wash in Jordan seven times everybody say the prophetic one more time say the prophetic now the prophet is speaking to him the prophet did not say I have seen that you are healed he said go and wash that means even if he passed by Jordan before coming and took his bath it will not heal him because it was not the water it was the word let's assume he quickly took his bath in Jordan before coming to meet the prophet he will still not be healed go and wash in Jordan how many times seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean after all the pride and arguments verse 14 he finally washed seven times and the bible says he went down and dipped himself seven times in jordan according to the sayings not according to the power that is in the water 
according to the sayings of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean the prophetic is powerful example number three John chapter 2 from verse 7 to 11 the turning of water to wine there was no wine embarrassment was imminent in the feast and Jesus said to them fill the pots with water and the Bible says they obeyed they filled them up to the brim watch Jesus manifesting the prophetic now he said draw it out and bear it to the governor and the Bible says they took that risk and they believed it verse 9 when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine he knew not whence it came and then verse 10 and he said to him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. Turning water to wine, he says, This beginning of miracles, miracles through the prophetic, did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And the disciples believed on him. If water can turn to wine, then a tenant can become a landlord. If water can turn to wine, then a barren womb can carry triplets. This is spiritual logic. If water can turn to wine, then someone right now whose account is red, something is able to happen to you by the Spirit of God. It is true. Huh. If water can turn to wine, then that drug addict, that our precious brother, can be turned into an apostle of fire. Do you know what that means? While we look not at the things that are seen, anything that does not look like what God says, start waving it goodbye because it can turn to wine. Water can turn to wine. I'm not saying wave it goodbye physically. In your mind, this situation in this family maybe you are a father you can go home and say listen it looks like i'm an irresponsible man i'm doing my best my dear wife and children listen i learned in koinonia that the god of miracles and the prophetic can turn water to wine that means someday this cry is going to be laughter in this house water turns to wine joblessness turns to a job that somebody who today is looking for a job tomorrow will be the one employing labor that someone whose prayer life has died on ground zero is the one who will be inspiring people tomorrow the prophetic can I give you one more example John chapter 11 from verse 41 to 44 this one for me is about the zenith of the demonstration of the power of the prophetic to create remember our definition of creation to make manifest that which resides in the spirit without a material expression they took away the stone Lazarus from the place where he was dead and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. Next verse. The Bible says, And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said that they may believe thou hast sent me. 43. And when he has thus spoken, Jesus, the epitome of the prophetic, he stood in front of a tomb with a body that is four days old, decayed, dead, and he cried, Lazarus come forth and verse 44 the Bible says he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about him with a napkin and Jesus said unto them lose him and let him go hear me the prophetic does not only say come forth the prophetic also says lose him and let him go because if you come forth and you are still bound you, is, you, are, you just came out to embarrass yourself. The beauty of coming forth is that you are loosed. Don't say my family has been dead. Now I've, I, God has brought us visibility. 
you must lose him and let him go creation by the prophetic one word Lazarus come forth lose him and let him go and that was it now I have taught you here just for your information that in order of superiority the creative dimension of the prophetic is far superior to the revelatory dimension of the prophetic it's important that I reiterate this because we are discussing on the prophetic in order of priority the creative dimension of the prophetic is by far superior to the revelatory dimension even though both of them have the the active roles that they play in the life of the individual but that the creative dimension of the prophetic is by far superior and even more profitable to the believer than the revelatory dimension i wish there was time would have gone to john 11 again and i would have shown you jesus demonstrated two dimensions of the prophetic the revelatory and the creative and you will see that even in jesus's ministry the revelatory dimension failed for instance when lazarus was sick jesus told them by revelation that this sickness is not unto death that means calm down i have seen it the sickness is not unto death he will not die but the bible says he died so if you were to depend on revelation there that's it even where revelation fails there is still hope because creation can happen are you seeing that now it was jesus himself who said our brother sleepeth and you see some of the disciples who were dull of hearing they said ah if, if, if he sleepeth that is very good good for him that's why it's good to hear with the ears of the spirit if he's sleeping he's sick so that is good for him and jesus had to tell them plainly our brother is dead let's go and wake him up and then you hear what was it thomas or one of the disciples very ignorant he says good let's go there and die with him i think that was judas or one of these people and there are these kinds of people in church when the preacher is preaching they are hearing something else he said let's go and die with how do you say such kind of a thing he said let's go and resurrect this i believe he was being sarcastic okay jesus let's go there so we'll even go and die with lazarus hallelujah and where the revelatory dimension failed when jesus got there he didn't say i've already seen lazarus coming out lazarus is dead revelation was correct creation lazarus come out that means where revelation sees creative dimension can correct revelation can see that there was an accident tomorrow and creative dimension can come up and say in spite of the accident i decree and declare you will return home safe yeah. mm. how to engage the prophetic for victory pay attention now how to engage the prophetic for victory how to engage the prophetic for victory please help me i just saw light coming on two ladies right now as i just spoke this i just said this prophetic and i just saw light and the lord is saying by that light that this sermon is bringing redemption to many families where there has been i you know i spoke about death death does not just have to be physical it can be spiritual it can be financial i'm declaring right now by the spirit everything that represents death in your life by the power that raised christ from the dead i command resurrection now please be seated how to engage the prophetic for victory please listen the days that we live in right now are days that require high level spiritual intelligence you must know how to engage all these spiritual resources that have been given for the victory of the believer you will be surprised how many people's lives have been grounded scattered limited because they have ignored the operation and even the ministry of the prophetic now there are two principal channels for accessing the prophetic let me put this down then i begin to teach you how to engage the prophetic pro 
proper. There are two principal channels for accessing the prophetic. That means if it is the prophetic you want, there are only two places you can find it. Not three, not four, not five. There are only two principal channels for accessing the prophetic. Are you ready now? Number one, scripture. The first platform for accessing the prophetic is the word of God, scripture. Second Peter 1 and verse 19. The Bible calls the word of God a more sure word of prophecy. A more sure word of prophecy. That means in ranking, the word of God is far superior to the next platform that I'll be teaching you. Can you imagine that? The word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. And the Bible says we have also we have also that means don't look at other channels and forget the one you have you have also a more sure word of prophecy please hear me believers i'm demystifying the operation of the prophetic for you so that you will understand every time you are in need of the prophetic there are only two channels that communicate the prophetic number one is the word of god scripture Every believer can manifest the prophetic because of our access to scripture. John 1 and verse 3, the Bible says all things were made by him, him being the word. So the word is creative, it can make all things just like the prophetic. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. You know what that means? I may not be a prophet. I may not operate in the gift of the prophet. But I can engage the operation of the prophetic by engaging in scripture. I'll be teaching you shortly. But that you can take advantage of the scripture and create possibilities in your life. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. The Bible says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. The walls were framed by the word of God. The first channel for accessing the prophetic is the scripture. Number two, the second biblical channel for accessing the prophetic, are you ready now? Is a human vessel in partnership with the Holy Spirit. A human vessel, classically speaking, is a human vessel in partnership with a spirit. But since we are not diviners and demons here, we are, we are emphasizing the Holy Spirit. Because the person who is prophesying inside a cave is also in partnership with a spirit. Except that that is not the spirit of God. Are we together? A human vessel in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So look up please. When you are looking for the prophetic on earth, there are only two places, only two channels that are authorized dispensers of the prophetic. Number one, the word of God. Number two, human vessels that are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 and verse 12 to 14. What is the big deal about the Holy Spirit with men? Hear what Jesus had to say about him. I have yet many things to say unto you, he says, but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus is speaking, John 16, 13 now. He says, how be it when he, the Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not a ghost. Unfortunately, they use the word ghost. The ghost, a ghost is the spirit of the dead. The Holy Spirit has never and will never die. He's the spirit of life. So I know that there's an error in translation. You will see Holy Ghost. But I can assure you, he's, more than, he's not a ghost. Not even more than a ghost. He's not a ghost. The living spirit of God. Even when Jesus died, he was the one who came and resurrected him by the glory of the Father. Please keep that scripture there. The Holy Ghost. Powerful. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says he will guide you into how many truth? How many truth? All truth. He said, for he shall not speak of himself. So the Holy Ghost speaks. But whatsoever he shall hear, 
that shall he speak let's read the last line together ready one to read and he will show you things to come so don't begin to question and say how did you know he will show you things to come any spirit really can show you things to come but the Holy Spirit shows you things to come in a way that glorifies Jesus you see the glorification of Jesus is what distinguishes the ministry of the Holy Spirit against any other spirit because the spirit of prophecy always testifies of Jesus is someone learning let's finish up 13 14 now that verse it says give us verse 14 he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and he shall show it unto you first Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 to 12 two principal channels for accessing the prophetic one is scripture the other is a human vessel in partnership with the Holy Spirit the Bible says, but God had revealed them to us by his spirit. Please say by his spirit. So God reveals to men by his spirit. For the spirit has an advantage of searching all things, even the deep things of God. Reading to 12, 11 now. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man that is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. That means you cannot know the things of God. What God is doing cannot be made available to you except by the spirit of God. Verse 12, the Bible says, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Are you saying that the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit who is out there? There is the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Please watch this. Every time you want to access the prophetic, whether one who is called into the prophetic office or any believer that just wants to manifest the prophetic, please hear me. If you ever believe that a prophet is the one who prophesies, you failed. If you ever believe a spiritual believer is the one who prophesies, you failed. You only prophesy to the degree to which you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit factor must be res respected. Are we together now? That means glorifying men because of their prowess in revealing or creating realities and ignoring the spirit that powers them is idolatry because they derive the ability to see the ability to hear and the ability to speak and it happens because of their partnership please do not forget this this is now a correction to some of the mistakes that happen if I begin to prophesy right now, whether the revelatory dimension or the creative dimension, because you cannot see the Holy Spirit, I am the man you see. Chances are excellent that if you are not given this superior orientation, you will ignore him. How many people will leave the Holy Spirit in their room and run to look for a man that he is the one helping? while we honor men you know that we are advocates of honor while we respect the prophetic office and all operations of the prophetic i must let you know that any man who operates either as a prophet or as a believer operating the prophetic he's only doing that by the agency and the advantage and the mercy of the spirit our attention must be on god even by his spirit more than the human vessel and if the human vessel has been well cultured mentored and trained by God he will very quickly shift the attention of the people from him to the giver of all good things are we together but for your knowledge tonight just know that every time you are in need of the prophetic there are two reference points number one the Holy Scripture a, a more sure word of prophecy number two a human vessel empowered by the Spirit of God and glory be to God when you have within your reach both you see please help them now this place is going to get very hot right now 
so pay attention because i believe that there will be impartations as i begin to teach i just sense that now watch this do you know please let me have your attention do you know why the word of god is called a more sure word of prophecy very simple reason the word of god has been tried but human vessels you see operating the prophetic through a human vessel eh? it depends on many factors for its accuracy number one it depends on the level of consecration and yieldedness of the vessel are you seeing that now let me show you why the prophetic through human vessels comes with various shades of inaccuracies even though it is a biblical platform but it depends number one on the level of consecration of the human vessel it means an individual can carry a spirit of divination for instance leviticus 19 31 please give it to us let me show you something now Le leviticus 19 31 I, I believe that should be it media can we work together it says regard not them that have familiar spirits neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them for i am the lord your god that means a, a human vessel can have residing within him a spirit that is not of the christ in fact the same leviticus give us 20 and verse 6 i believe 20 verse 6 yes as the soul that turneth after such that have familiar spirits and after wizards and go a warring after them it says i will set my face against that soul and i will cut him off from among his people in Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 16 to 18, the Bible talks about a young lady that was possessed with this, a spirit of divination. You know what it means to divine? To divine means to take advantage of the loss of the spirit outside of the supervision of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says she brought much gain. Are you seeing that when it is a spirit that is not of the Christ, the goal is not the revelation of Jesus. The goal is the belly. We need to be careful. Are we hearing tonight? Very important. It is not just the accuracy of the prophecy. These guys found out that this lady had the spirit of divination. And the Bible says she brought her master's gain by soothsaying, not prophesying. Soothsaying. The spirits will speak and while she says that because I taught you here koinonia that the prophetic is a highly is is a manifestation of the spirit that relates with your emotions and your psychology very strongly telling you details about your life it can sweep you off your feet immediately whether the revelatory dimension or the creative dimension you know before God helped me to be known across the body of Christ, I remember when I would travel for meetings and people would be looking, some of them did not know me, and I would just sit down and say, ah, there's someone, the power of God is coming on a few people, and you could see people looking at me, what kind of pride is this, this guy? And then suddenly, people begin to shout up and down, and you know that sense of respect, and someone just keeps going, wow, this is serious. How did he know that this will happen? How did he know that somebody will start running? How did he know that this one will happen? The spirit of divination can do that. When the Holy Spirit comes, he has a singular assignment of revealing Jesus. Not even revealing just the man. This is where respectfully speaking, I speak to the body of Christ. There are many sincere people who love the Lord, but we need to trust God to correct our approach to the prophetic. There is prosperity with the prophetic, but the prophetic is not for prosperity. Listen to me. There is prosperity with the prophetic, but the assignment of the prophetic is not prosperity. The assignment of the prophetic in the New Testament and for the believer today is to walk together with all other graces and manifestations to reveal Jesus. And that's it. Are we together? So I said that prophecy through a human vessel is limited by many factors. Number one, the level of consecration and yieldedness. Number two, the kind of association that person is. You can be a genuine prophet 
or one who is inclined to the prophetic but because of a wrong association it can corrupt the purity and even the accuracy of your dispensing the prophetic just giving you many information number three your level of transformation and enlightenment listen a prophet can be genuine loves God with all his heart but because his mind is not transformed there will be a, a high margin of error in his perception in Mark in Mark chapter 8 verse 22 let me show you something Mark 8 22 the Bible says Jesus came to Bethsaida and they brought to him a blind man and besought him to touch him we're reading to 25 very quickly the Bible says he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town watch this and the Bible says he spat on his eyes and put his hands on him and asked him if he was seen are you seeing now look at the man the man looked up and said I see men as trees walking that is an aberration in, in, in perception. The same way it happened to this man, there are many genuine prophets who have not been transformed to purify their prophetic, um, uh, uh, what do you call it now? The dispensing of their prophetic. So even though they are genuine, when you come around them and they speak to you, it ends up confusing you because it is a genuine gift or a genuine grace, but without transformation. The prophetic through a human vessel depends largely on your level of orientation and perception. Let's finish that scripture, please. 25. The Bible says he put his hand again on his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and he saw every man clearly. Yes, I'm seeing a vision about you, but it's not clear. And most people come up with that unrefined dimensions of visions. That is why you see that the margin of error, they can say something today, it is very accurate. And you meet them tomorrow and what they tell you becomes the biggest confusion in your life. But because of the accuracy of what happened yesterday, you will now follow in that confusion and they themselves are surprised. Because the prophetic does not happen automatically. For the human vessel, it depends on your level of transformation. Some of you right now, you are in pain from the prophetic that blessed you. And it is still causing you right now. It has both blessed and cursed you. Do you know why? Because as sincere as we the vessels are, our level of scriptural transformation is what connects to provide purity to our speaking and our seeing and our hearing. Don't go around saying I'm a prophet or I was laid, hands were laid by a prophet and ignore the word of God. Most prophets only pray they don't stay to understand doctrine. Prayer will deepen your reach in the realm of the spirit. But the word of God will guide your operation while you are there. So most people find out the moment they have a prophetic inclination, all they are concerned about is prayer. And you can see a man two weeks, dry fasting, praying. And he will come out and tell you, you see everything that I saw? I saw you in a pit. Okay, what is the scriptural explanation of that? It is the Bible that now gives that seeing a perspective that glorifies Jesus. Mm. The prophetic from a human vessel is also limited by your level of level of sincerity at heart. The level of character and sincerity of the vessel jeremiah 14 14 i believe that scripture is just coming to my spirit now jeremiah 14 14 the bible says and the lord said unto me the prophets prophesy lies in my name i have not sent them neither have i commanded them neither speak unto them they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing not and deceit of the heart let me tell you the truth please look up I confess to you as a man of God and on behalf of several men of God I can tell you when God brings you to a position where people know you and accept you to be a credible voice and believe in you sometimes you are pressured by the level of faith and confidence that people place on you that you are tempted to just say anything to redeem your pedigree I told you genuine prophets can lie 
I can come to you sincerely and say, Apostle, I know that if I just see you, all my problems are ending. Three of my children stole. I want to just know who to really deal with. And I, this is a simple thing with you. God gave you the eyes that see. You see, after, after acknowledging the investment of the Spirit in your life like that, will you now tell the person, sorry, it looks like I'm limited. And the person says, so I traveled from America to come and meet you only to hear this explanation. I would have used my fare ticket to go to a restaurant and eat and even be happy. And chances are excellent that you can sit down and start saying things that God did not say. And because you have a track record of credibility, listen, a track record of credibility does not automatically mean you are credible now. A track record of credibility is an advantage, but make no mistake, people change. Don't say you were accurate and fine yesterday. We need to see what God is doing with you now. There was a man in the Bible called Demas. There's no time to teach you. Demas did not start false. He started genuinely and sincerely. But because of the cares of this world and all of that, he just derailed. A track record of credibility is wonderful. But that does not automatically translate into excellence and acceptance today. It is important for people to see your dealings with God now. Is someone learning? This is very, very important. So the prophetic can be affected. Someone can come with 200 million naira and say, God spoke to me and said, I should come to a ministry in Abuja. I want to verify from you whether you are the one. Or is somebody else say character please shout it say character now remember that man is willing to give 200 million is in front of you and the person wants to know who God said he should give and you are standing there are you saying that the prophetic can be affected by that scripture does not care who it is talking to it just knows that it is there to reveal Jesus you walk against it, you suffer. You walk in partnership with it, God is glorified in your life. But here is a human vessel who has eyes, ears, and emotions. They can look at you and just begin to think. And the flesh, the unrenewed part of you will now arise. And say, think of what this 200 million can do. Remember, God told you that your children are going to Canada. Could this be that this is a miracle? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.